This is Dr. Alan Birkenfield and his wife, Virginia, from Jamaica, Long Island, who have earned a salary of $500 a day for four days. And today, they try for $2,500 on Do You Trust Your Wife? Now, here's the star of our show, Johnny Carson. Thank you. Uh, welcome again to Do You Trust Your Wife. Today we make our first phone call in our scrambled name contest to somebody at home that sent us a card trying for a fabulous trip, a vacation, a car, and a whole mess of prizes. You do this when you get a haircut? I got a trim today, and I've been going like this. Ever I got get Barbers get have never price. solved this problem, you know, of when they trim your hair, what they do about the hair that goes down that way. So if I stand like this today, it's not nerves. I got a haircut. Something occurred to me. When one barber gets his hair cut by another barber, who does the talking? <laughs> I don't know how they work that out. Bill, who's... It doesn't require anything. Bill, who's first to try to... Johnny from New York City. Yes. A fencing master leads off today with his wife, Terry, meet Odon Niederkirchner. How are you? Odon, how are you? How are you? Bill did pretty well on that last name, didn't he, Odon? Yes. Niederkirchner. Oh, right? Niederkirchner. Niederkirchner. Oh, sure. No, Kirchner. <laughs> you have any... You have, do you have a family? Sure. How many, how many children do you have? Yes, I have a big married boy, and uh -huh. I have a little son, 11 uh -huh. year old. 11 year old and one son Ooh. is married, huh? Yes. Hey, wonderful. <laughs> the George is in Germany. He's married there. Is that and my daughter is an excellent American. Hey, girl. Excellent. Oh, well, then I understand that you're a, Bill said you're a fencing master. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Exactly what does a fencing master oh, do? Oh, I teach people to fence. Foil, uh -huh. AP, Sabre. Uh -huh. where, do you, where, where do you teach this? Oh, for a living. Oh, I see. I mean, where? Where do you, where do you teach? The New York Athletic Club. But you know that in the, in the old days, yeah. a knight, you know, he put his sword at the service of a king, you know. And I put my service today at the New York Athletic Club. Is that right? I teach there. How long have you been teaching fencing? For 30 years. Ah. How many, what kind of people? Is this oh, everybody can fence. Is that right? Sure, everybody. Children. Men. Women. women? You ah, that right? That right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. That comes in handy on the subway, too, oh, I would imagine. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> there the it goes. It's in order. <laughs> can it, you say anyone can be taught to fence? Sure, but it is different, you know. Uh -huh. You know, you, somebody can be a very good fencer, are they a bad fencer, you know? It's it is a big difference between the good and bad fencer, you know. I suppose the difference is that the bad fencer is dead, huh? Oh, is no! <laughs> No. What is Chuck, this? Chuck, he's a bad fencer, you know. The good fencer, it moves like a cat. Moves like the a cat. The bad fencer moves like a dog. Look, I shall. All right. Good fencer. Ha, 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 Boom. You see? They move, smooth, smooth. Comes the dog. The Comes bad the dog. fencer. Hey, come on, boy. Falling. Hey. <laughs> 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 that I like that. Welcome to Zoo Parade, folks. Uh huh? Hey, that's fine. Tell me this. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, do they still do much uh, dueling in uh, Europe? Dueling in Europe? It's supposed to be, how do you say, outlawed. Yeah. But still they do. Mm -hmm. Especially in France. They do a lot of dueling in France? Uh, a lot of duels. Why is that? Oh, you know. It takes a lot of nerve. Uh -huh. And the French, they have a lot of nerve. I guess they do. do. I guess they do have the gall, all right. Sure. Oh. Oh. Let's have any yawning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe bad, but it's topical, friend. <laughs> Look, I understand you brought some uh, some swords. Yes, I have. Okay. How does uh, how do you get into duel anyway? The duel, you know. I well, see. good. These are the, what, what do you call these now? Saber. I see. Now, how how do you start I, a duel anyway? A duel. How does it usually start? As well, you insult somebody, you know. Uh huh. And now, that's the, that's the serious, you know, if you insult my back. I insulted her. You huh? insulted her, my back. Yeah. Sir, choose your weapon. Well, I'll... Choose have, your weapon. I'll, take it. I'll have one of these and one of these. No, 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 her. Hey, what is that? <laughs> I, don't, you want I have me? nothing. You're going to show me how to do this? Oh, can I take someone. this off a second? No. Oh, take it. Take it. Take it. Hey, go! Take it, take it. Have the animal stand by. What do, how do I hold it? No, no, no. Come on. Come on. You, I kill you, you turn up. Hey, 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 h
That's not that's not cricket, is it? Huh? Sneak up behind somebody? Uh, I'm not so I'm cowardly when I fight. You know that's the way to win. Never kick a man when he's down. He might get up. You know. Tap in the back. Odin, thank you. I, I I imagine that is a fascinating uh, sport, and I imagine it takes many years, doesn't it, too? Oh. To become for a lady, it takes two, three months. That's about all, huh? Oh, yes, for a lady. Can I go out and over and take a picture? That's for ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, oh, Mama. Nice having you with us today, Odin. I'll tell you what. Stand by and relax for a minute. Thank you. We'll play Do You Trust Your Wife. Ah! Hi, everybody. I'm Will Hutchins. And I sure hope you'll be watching me every other week, alternating with that big fella, Cheyenne in our exciting hour-long western, Sugarfoot. We've got a good show for you. There's more action going on in Sugarfoot than you ever saw. The shooting's good and true, and the riding's fast and furious. Of course, I make pretty sure that wherever I am, there's some pretty gals around. There's all of this and more every other week on Sugarfoot. Hope you like it. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you will. Sugarfoot, every other week on ABC. Adventure tonight over most of these stations. <laughs> okay, on on. On guard here for the first category. We're... <laughs> First names of famous people is worth $25. You want to trust yourself? Uh, that's business. I trust myself. All right. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is Macmillan. What is his first name? Harold. Harold Macmillan. Right. <laughs> now, composers is worth $50. Famous composers. You going to take that one, too? Oh Nutcracker Suite and Swan Lake are two of this Russian composer's most popular works. Who is he? Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, right. Okay, now we're going to talk about famous rivers for $75. Rivers. <laughs> Which one? Mississippi. No, <laughs> you don't get to choose a river. <laughs> <laughs> you say it. <laughs> <laughs> I that. Well, they named a river. No, we're, the, the category is about rivers. Yeah. You want to take this one? Yes. All right. This river is called China's Sorrow. This 2,700-mile river is second only to the Yangtze in length. What is this large river of China? It's called China's Sorrow. It's second not only the, to the Yangtze. Uh, the Yellow River? You're right. The Yellow River. Pardon? Thank you so much. For being okay, Bill. Well. And now for you at home, our new famous name game. A game that could win you a car and take you on a dream vacation anywhere in the whole wide world. Thank you, Bill. All right, here we go. We showed you these letters yesterday. We'll turn them around again. Write them down at home if you haven't already done so. We have a T, R, E, an A, M, L, H, two E's, and an N and an M. Now, these letters, when they're unscrambled and put together in the right way, give you the first and last names of a famous personality in show business. All you have to do is get the right name. If we call you and you correctly identify our famous personality from our scrambled letters, here is what you will win. Bill? A dream vacation for two to anywhere in the world. And here's how you'll go. You'll board an SAS DC-7C in New York and fly to anywhere on the global route of the Scandinavian airline system, first over the pole with worldwide service. London lavished with pageantry or the beauty of the English garden. Have you longed to see Bonnie Scotland with his colorful pipers in the heel and fling? Or the quiet dignity of the great cathedral? Right across the channel is France, Paris, with its glamorous international flavor. And less than a day from Paris, the beautiful chateau country. And the fabulous beaches of the Riviera. And wherever you go, you'll collect lifetime memories in just 60 seconds with the famous Polaroid land camera and Polaroid new film. You'll have a tour of the city and wonderful accommodations arranged for you by the Fugazi Travel Bureau. And when you return, here's what you'll find. An all-new, all-automatic General Electric keyboard range with the lift-off door that makes oven cleaning a breeze in GE's Spacemaker range. 
And this surprise awaits you, too. The world-famous British beauty, the Triumph Fiendora State Wagon. The Triumph carries the entire family in comfort and ease. All this can be yours in our new Dream Contest. Johnny? Thank you, Bill. All righty. Now, today's telephone call has already been placed, so stand by. I might be talking to you in just one minute on Do You Trust Your Wife? From one of the world's most gifted motion picture creators comes Disneyland, whose wondrous portals open to Adventureland, Tomorrowland, Frontierland, and Fantasyland. Fantasyland, where even elephants can fly, and little boys understand the simple language of the animals they love. Tomorrowland, taking you on miraculous trips to outer space, far beyond the orbits mankind has reached today. Adventureland, bringing you exciting stories of man's exploits and of the animals Walt Disney loves so well. Frontierland, where men of the mountains and men of the plains tame America's flaming frontier. Disneyland, it's wonder, fantasy, and adventure. See it every week on ABC. Visit Disneyland Park tomorrow over most of these stations. Our call today in our scramble name game is going to Mrs. Grace Zetwak, Z-E-T-T-W-O-E-C-H, in New Orleans, Louisiana. Hello, Mrs. Zetwak. Can you hear me all right? How are you today? Just fine. Are you a little excited that we picked your card out? <laughs> You're past excited, huh? Well, don't pass out now. You're familiar with the letters in our scrambled name <coughs> game. All you have to do is unscramble and give us the first and last name of a famous personality in that trip around the world to any place of your choice will be yours along with that station wagon and all the other prices. You can have one guess and one guess only, so unscramble the letters and tell us who is the famous personality. Uh, give, give, could you give that to me again, please? Helen, and the last name you say? No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not right. You say M-A-M-E-R-T. No, it is not. I am sorry. You didn't get them unscrambled in the right order, Mrs. Uh, Zetwak. Uh, but because we did choose your card today and have the privilege of talking with you, we do have some nice gifts for you. Okay? Bill, would you tell her about them? Right, Johnny. Well, Mrs. Zetwak, you've won this really beautiful Tangy train case completely filled with famous Tangy cosmetics, including their newest lipstick, Tropicana Orange. And for the man in your life, a 14-carat gold-filled cross pen and pencil set from A.T. Cross. And for the whole family's enjoyment this summer, you'll love this down there in Louisiana, too, the new Amana Compact one-horsepower air conditioner that needs no special wiring and uses no more current than an electric iron. Made in the world-famous Amana colonies in Amana, Iowa. Well, Mrs. Edmark, although uh, you didn't win the big trip, you did win some nice gifts. How do they sound? All right? <laughs> oh, well, we hope you enjoy the gifts, and uh, they'll be coming down your way very soon. I understand you have three children and eight grandchildren, right? Well, you give them our best, will you? And thanks for writing us. Nice talking with you. Goodbye. Okay, tomorrow we make another phone call, so be sure and get your cards in. Bill, why don't you give them the address? Here it is, Johnny White, Box 249, ABC TV, New York 23, New York. Right after station identification, more of Johnny Carson and do you trust your wife? Denise Darcell and Cliff Norton try their luck at charades at Mike Stokey's Pantomime Quiz tonight. Don't miss the fun on ABC Television Network. Welcome once again to Do You Trust Your Wife? This portion of our show brought to you by Jell-O Instant Pudding. That quick, quick, good, good, busy day dessert. Now back... My land, how a day can go. <laughs> busy day, busy day. Busy, busy, busy day. Off to the station, off to shop. Busy, busy, never stop. Mop the floor, turn the clothes. Here, here, blow your nose. Busy day, tick tock. Busy day, six o'clock. Six o'clock, dinner time. 
Thank goodness for Jell-O Instant Pudding. Yes, thank goodness for Jell-O Instant Pudding. The terrific busy day dessert you can make at the very last minute. See how quick and easy. Just add it to cold milk and beat it up. That's all. By the time you're ready to eat it, it's all ready for you. Jell-O Instant Pudding, made by the famous Jell-O folks. So creamy, so nourishing, so delicious. No other instant pudding is quite the same. Stock your shelves with all seven flavors. The good, good, busy day dessert. Jell-O Instant Pudding. And now, back to the star of our show, Johnny Carson. Well, back twice today. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome for Jell-O Instant Puddings. The second half of Do You Trust Your Wife? Mrs. Zetwak down in New Orleans uh, missed our scramble letter game, so be sure and get your card in the mail today, if possible, because the next call could just as easily be to you. Bill, who's our uh, second couple to try for the $500 today? Johnny, next we have a man who is a pitchman. Pitchman. Oh. Let's welcome for Jell-O Instant Pudding, Johnny and Adele oh. McConnell. Adele, how are you? What do you have? What kind of a hat do you call that, Adele? Mm -hmm. Is there a it's name for it? I hope. It's, it's a very pretty hat. Jo Bill said, Johnny, that you're a, a pitchman, right? That's right, Johnny. Is a pitchman the connotation I think it is, the old-time pitchman? Maybe you better fill us in a little bit. Well, uh, let's say, for instance, you go into a five and ten, you want to buy a tube of toothpaste. Yeah. And you see a big crowd, you hear a lot of laughing, so you walk over and you start to listen. The next thing you know, you're walking out of the store with a whole bag full of kitchen gadgets, but no toothpaste. <laughs> That's a pitchman. Bring you right in and sell you, huh? That's right. Adele, was John a pitch man when you, uh, when you married him? Yes, he was. Uh, let's see now, we've been uh, married 17 years. And he's, yes, oh, he's okay. a pitch man uh, 18, and uh, we, I guess we've been a pitch man all his life. Is that right? You have, you, have, you have a family? You have any children at home? Yes, we have two. Ah, boy good. and a girl. Yeah. Uh -huh. Expect more, do you? Uh, we'd like to have another one. <laughs> well, keep pitching. That's the only way to do it. Uh, yeah. John, how did, how did you meet Adele? Huh? <laughs> a Dick Clark show for my next number. Uh-huh. How did you, uh, how did you meet Adele, John? You... Uh, well, Johnny, I was doing a pitch in, uh, a five and ten over Newark, and I was selling a, a vegetable slicer, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I got my crowd together, and I'd done the whole pitch, and I was just about to ask for the money, and all of a sudden, somebody in the back said, I bought one of them, and mine don't work like that. I'm not a bit happy about it. So I leaned out and I said, you bought one, you're not happy? I got 10,000. Imagine how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Here's somebody who's really unhappy, huh? So she started to laugh and everything, and uh, I showed her how to use it, and then she came back in the store, and I asked her how the machine was and everything. We had coffee together. We got friendly, and uh, I guess I did about the best picture I ever did because we were married 16 years. Hey, you sure did. did. <laughs> what, what's the hot item, uh, hot item that you're selling now, yeah? Uh, I'm selling a uh, potato stretcher. A potato stretcher? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> What's that, for people who like tall potatoes? Or yeah, what? I just happen to have one right here in my pocket. You know, a pitchman's always prepared. Uh, you wouldn't have a potato by any chance, would you? We have a couple of potatoes left out from a cookout they had on the Dick Clark show a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Cindy, would you bring a potato up? You fascinate me when you do these pitches, you fellas. And I thought maybe you might get a kick out of seeing this. Is that's that... a real nice potato, isn't it, Chuck? Yes, it certainly is. Not me, right. Oh, this one here, yes. That's, that's a... <laughs> uh, uh, here's the way, here's the way you use How would you do your pitch thing. now? Okay. Well, you see... The number one thing is, you always take and you peel your vegetable. Now, this is for a woman that likes to be a little bit of a fancy cook. Now, what you do is you take and you peel the vegetable all the way around. See, once you get your vegetable peeled, you take that little screw and you put it right in the center of the vegetable and you start to wind it in. Now, when the little screw starts to take hold, you're all ready. Yeah. You hold it in an upright position, now you start to wind it. Mm -hmm. See, you can do this with a potato, a carrot, a beet or radish, a cucumber, a turnip, a pineapple, a rutabaga, or anything with a hard center. As a matter of fact, you women out there can cut a bushel of onions and never shed a tear. Now, you see, that comes apart like a little spring. Now, people say it's nice, but what do you do with that? Well, here, you use it as a garnish. You lay that along a roast. You let it taste in brown and gravy. Or you take both ends, bring it together this way. You deep fat fry it, it comes out golden brown. As a matter of fact, it's getting brown already. You can see how fast it cooks. Some night you... <laughs> Well, some night you have a lot of company, you only got one potato, you stretch it out. The more company you have, the further out you stretch it. <laughs> they eat it fine, if they don't push it back and eat it yourself. <laughs> You have to start it over now if you were to do it. See, now you take it out and you start from oh, the other end. I have to. Do we have time for me to do this? Just start it right from the other end. That's Put it. it. Just wind it in. Give it a chance to get threaded. That's right. Now just hold it up straight and just wind it around. Like that, huh? That's the boy. Uh, round and around you go. That's the idea. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but I did it. Look at that, huh? 
for my first selection. <laughs> Great. Tell you what, I have to do a little pitching right now myself. I don't think I can pitch uh, quite as well as you can. How? Tell me, I, I'm going to talk about Jello Instant Pudding. Suppose that they ask you to do a a, a, a pitch for Jello Instant Pudding. You were going to do the commercial on television. How would you do it? Would you give us a short idea? Jello Instant Pudding. Yeah. Well, I got one that might fit in there. Okay. How uh, would you go? Friends, let me ask you a question. Every time that you in your neighborhood play hide and go seek, is your child always the first one caught? Is he the best checker player, but without a doubt, the worst baseball player in the neighborhood? Uh, is he the kind of a fellow that's a water boy on a football team instead of the quarterback? If so, there's definitely something wrong. Stop and think for one minute. Why'd you give that boy for dessert? What? There's your answer. Why not give him what thousands of boys are eating all over America and enjoying? Pudding. Why'd you say it's too hard to make, it takes too long? Well, 30 years ago, this might have been a problem. Now, I remember my grandmother. She used to walk two miles to get a piece of chocolate. And if it was a hot day on the way home, it was half melted, so was she. Then she'd go home and take a grater, and she'd start to do something like this. By the time she got down to the bottom of it, you'd have fingernails, knuckles, nail polish, everything in the pudding. <laughs> Take about an hour to eat a spoonful. Well, here today, thanks to Jell-O Winston Pudding, all you do is open up a box, add a little cold milk, and you beat. And in about one minute, you got the finest, tastiest, temptiest, I am feeling the great you've ever tasted in all your life. Do it. Oh, John, I hate to follow you. Huh? A hard fit to follow. But seriously, relax and for one minute we'll play the game. But right now, I would like you gals to take a look at something right over here. Because this is the first time that you're going to see a really delicious, genuine ice cream pie that needs no freezing. It's uh, firm textured, cuts perfectly every time, keeps in the refrigerator, and you can make it tonight with Jell-O Instant Pudding. It's just as easy as this. All you need is one cup of milk, one pint of any flavor ice cream, and of course, one package of any flavor Jell-O Instant Pudding. Now you soften the uh, ice cream with the milk like we've already done here. This happens to be chocolate ice cream, but of course you can use any flavor that you go for. And then you simply add one package of Jell-O Instant Pudding. Any one of the seven flavors that you like. Then you simply blend well and immediately pour into a, a pie shell or a graham cracker crust. You chill for about one hour in your refrigerator. Why don't you try it today? It's that simple. Sensational ice cream pie. Made in minutes with the fabulous magic of Jell-O Instant Pudding. It has no knuckles. And it has no knuckles in it. John, we're going to talk about first names of famous people. Do you want to trust yourself or trust Adele on this one? I think I'll trust myself on this one. Okay, McKinley, a United States president. What was his first name? Uh, McKinley. William. William, William McKinley. McKinley, right. Okay, composers, famous composers. Music? Yeah. Uh -huh. You want to take a shot? I'm trying. I'm trying. Right. <laughs> Rhapsody in Blue and Porgy and Bess are major works of this American composer. Name him. Rhapsody in Blue and Porgy and Bess. And George Gersh? George Gersh? <laughs> what? You're looking at him for? <laughs> Always like these little sides. George Gersh? <laughs> <laughs> How about famous rivers? Famous yeah. rivers worth seventy-five dollars. I think I'll trust myself, John. One of the principal rivers of Europe forms the border between Switzerland and Germany. Name it. Uh, Switzerland and Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh. Forms the border between Switzerland and Germany. Oh my goodness. Switzerland and Germany. Hurry up. I have to ask for a guess here or an answer. Time is up. I was going to say that. No, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the Rhine River. Rhine. I knew you knew it, but couldn't think of it. Look, it is fine anyway. John, thanks for that demonstration. Well, well, it's a lot of fun. Okay, well, now it's time once again for today's big $500 a day question. And here, returning for the fifth day in a row to try for $2,500, a resident surgeon, Dr. Alan Birkenfield, and his wife, Virginia. Virginia, how you beat it? Then? I've asked you ever since you've been on the show. Do your patients watch this show from the hospital? Yes, they do, Johnny. And no. as a matter of fact, I lost a patient because of it. But nothing serious that I hope would you mean that way. What do you mean? You no, nothing very serious, but... Was the show one... that bad or what? <laughs> no. no. Huh? But there's one old man that's uh, always about one year younger than the General Sherman tree, and he's pretty set in his ways by now and yeah. pretty suspicious. 
And uh, the other day he said, well, I'm not going to let that Birkenfield operate on me anymore. He said, I just don't trust show people. <laughs> <laughs> That's delightful because you've been on television. That's right. Okay, today's winners you're going to compete with now with a quiz total of $150, Johnny. The Nieder Kitchener. Welcome back. Uh, okay. Odin and Alan, the category today for $500 is about <clears throat> Europe. Europe. Now, do you want to trust yourself or trust your wife? It's business, please. It's I trust you. You'll trust yourself. All right, Alan, how about you? I mean, on your, I'll trust myself. You'll trust yourself? Okay. Stand by, and in just one minute, we'll play Do You Trust Your Wife on the subject of Europe for $500. But right now, I'd kind of like to have you make a little note for me, just in case you run into the same situation that a friend of ours did. You know, her grocer stocked only a few of the delicious Jell-O instant flavors. So, today, do me a favor and do yourself a favor. Make a note of these seven sensational flavors, and if your grocer doesn't have them, you tell him to get them, because sooner or later, you're going to want to try all seven Jell-O instant puddings. First of all, there's velvety chocolate, <coughs> luscious butterscotch, tangy lemon, rosy strawberry, tempting banana, creamy coconut, and the old favorite, smooth vanilla. All of them made in minutes with no cooking. Jell-O instant puddings. <laughs> Odin, it's yeah. for $500. It's on Europe, and here is the question. 22 countries of Europe are republics. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the republics of Europe. In other words, the countries of Europe not ruled by monarchs. Do you understand the question? Yes. Are you ready? Very. Go. Uh, Helsinki. Uh, so, uh, countries of Europe. Yes. Finland, uh, Switzerland. Uh, Germany. Okay, the ten seconds is up. We'll be right back to you, Odin. Can we have the sound over here? Alan, can you hear me all right? I can, Johnny. All right, it's on Europe for $500. Here's the question. Twenty-two countries of Europe are republics. Within ten seconds after I say go... Name as many as you can of the republics of Europe. In other words, the countries of Europe not ruled by monarchs. Do you understand the question? The 21 republics of Europe. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Portugal, France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Austria, Poland. Uh... I don't believe we'll have time to read all the 22 countries of Europe that are republics, but Bill, what is the score? Well, Johnny, Odin Nieder Kirchner in a good try had one correct. Dr. Alan Birkenfield had nine correct. Our champions again, the Birkenfield. Congratulations. Odin? He beat me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can beat him dueling, though, I'll bet you. Sorry, but uh, we enjoyed having you today. Sorry you missed out on the big money, but it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Doctor, you and Virginia will be back tomorrow, right? How much do you have now? $2,500. $2,500. Okay, tomorrow you'll be going for $3,000. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs> this portion of you, you trust your wife, has been brought to you by Jell-O Instant Pudding. That quick, quick, good, good, busy day dessert. Remember, watch Johnny Carson as he stars this week on the Jack Parr Show. Remember, too, tomorrow, another phone call in our new Scrambled Name Game. Send your name, address, and telephone number to White, Box 249, ABC TV, New York 23, New York. And join us again at the same time tomorrow for Johnny Carson and Do You Trust Your Wife? This has been ABC Television. Wyatt Earp avenges the death of two Indian friends tonight. Hostile Indians set a trap in tonight's Broken Arrow drama. Watch ABC Television Network.